Are you taken or are you single? <laughs> I'm here with a drill heavy hitter. Heady One ain't no joke. From the early days on his estate to headlining his first tour. We are getting into the journey that has made Heady One the chart topping giant that he is today. I'm Steph London and this is The Rise with Shivas Regal. Welcome to The Rise with Shivas Regal. Please welcome our wonderful host, Steph London, and her guest, the man, Hetty One. Hetty, nice to see you again. Is there something particular cocktail-wise you guys normally like to have? Just anything that's sweet. Maybe like a little twist on a porn star martini, normally with vodka, but elevating that with some nice fruity Shivas flavors. Is it going to be sweet though? Oh, it's sweet. It's gonna be sweet. <laughs> Steph, I'm gonna make you the Don. Cheers. Okay, so tell me, what was it like growing up in Broadwater Farm? Because I've heard numerous stories about that place. Yeah, um, where do I start there? I don't know. At what age did you, was you born there or? Yeah, I was born there. So okay. I was born, well, I wasn't born literally there. <laughs> yeah. you, know? but, you grew up there from a uh, yeah, baby. Yeah, I, I was born around the corner from there, then obviously then like within the next couple oh, of days. Were you born in Northumberland Hospital? No, I was born in, is Northumberland Hospital? Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what's that hospital called? <laughs> in North Middlesex. So Northumberland Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> North Middlesex. Yeah, I was born in um, North Middlesex Hospital. Okay. It's like a Tottenham like hospital. North London Hospital. Yeah. And then, yeah, straight to Border of Farm. That's all you know. Yeah, that's all I ever knew, really. So it's like proper home, home store. So you're Ghanaian. Yeah. So talk to me about your Ghanaian heritage. I, I won't lie, because like the area that I was from, like it wasn't. We had like a wide Ghanaian community, but we had like loads of other um, communities as well, like Caribbean communities, Ghanaian, um, Congolese as well. Mm -hmm. So I was like very like. I wasn't really. How do I put this now? Let me think. I wasn't really in tune with my culture mm -hmm. when I was young. I was more in tune with like all different cultures. You know what I'm trying to say? And same as like my parent as well. And Your my parents sister. as well? Yeah, my, like my pups. Obviously, I grew up with my pups in it, so he was just like more kind of like... What was he? Like westernised a bit more? A bit, he's very westernised. Okay. A bit, yeah, like at home and that, yeah. So at home, did, did your parents not speak tree? Nah. No tree? Nah. Oh my God, so you don't have to speak tree? I'm not to speak it. But I've had to go out there and like. So what can you speak? Let me hear something. What do you want to hear? Say, say, say something in tree. So what didn't they say? What didn't they say? What didn't they say? You know what that means, what isn't it? What didn't they say? No, I don't. That I know what to say. What to say? That means, how are you? Yeah, and Kwasia. Kwasia. Yeah, that's that's everyone something that like everyone knows, though. <laughs> so like, what's the, what's what didn't they say? That's, um, what's your name? Oh, what's your name? Mm. I know, Mi Pachao. That means. Please. Yeah, my friend always says that when I'm in Ghana with her. Ma pacha, ma pacha. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. That means please. Because one thing in Ghana, you yeah. don't say please after everything and before everything. Literally. So you'd be like, please, yes, please. Please. <laughs> please, no, please. Please, please answer the question, please. Yes, please. <laughs> I can't lie, we've gone here because it's like home. Like I went there, I lived over there for like 18 months when I was younger. Oh, how old was you? I was in year five, to be precise. I don't know how old I was. That's like 10. So did you get did you get sent there for a reason? Or yeah. you, would you be naughty? Was you a bad boy? You know what's funny? Very, very bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in this primary school, I wasn't really bad. I was just naughty. My, my sister was like the bad one. Your sister? Yeah, so the combination of the naughtiness <laughs> and the badness together is just that, you know. So did they send both of you or just you? Yeah, both of us still. <laughs> How long was you there? <laughs> so I went there because of my sister, mostly because she was like keeping that badness and all that. And then she came up before me, which mm -hmm. I felt like was a bit, you know, of a violation. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was there 18 months. I went to school out there. No. Oh, nice. I went to um, school over there because um, there's, a, there's a school and uh, my friend helped build a technology high school and I had like some input and I went to see the kids there. And one thing I could say about the Ghanaian kids, they're always happy. Yeah. Did you notice that when you went there, like the kids were so happy, yeah. like and just, they love singing and stuff. They sing a lot in schools and stuff. Definitely, they like music a lot. What made you feel like, I want to do music? My older sister used to listen to like loads of different music. Like um, old school R and B and that, like Bashment and all that. So I always like understood music from young. And then when I was in secondary school, I started like 
that's trying, isn't it? You know, everyone had their bars in secondary school. <laughs> the bus back of the bus days, and yeah. yeah. I remember in um, lunchtime, people would always be like gathering around and rapping. Was you one of those people that would just rap in the middle? I was one of those people that I tried to rap in the middle. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I had my little. I stole some lyrics from that like LL Cool J and that, and then I remixed it. <laughs> I remixed it and then, yeah, that was my thing from like year seven to like year 10. I had the same lyrics. When I got to like year 10, year 11, then that's when I started going to studio more and experimenting. And How old was you when you first recorded a song? Probably like 14. 14. Yeah, 14 when I first recorded a song. There used to be like loads of us on one song, mm -hmm. like 10 people on one song. And then, um, yeah, I just run with it from there. So how do you feel hearing yourself back? Because the first time I went to the studio, I was nine. And I remember oh, hearing yeah. myself back, but it sounds different. Okay. Like your vocal sounds different to when you hear it back, right? How did you feel when you heard yourself back for the first time? Um, I felt like this this ain't really making sense, to be honest. <laughs> you know, you know, practice makes perfect, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What well, makes makes you more perfect, better. So when I first heard myself back, I was thinking I'm like, I'm rubbish. But um, I just kept tight. So like, it was a bit like cringe, like I don't yeah, really like these making, bars. Yeah. But you knew you had to go harder though. So you acknowledged like, okay, I need to come. Yeah. But I felt like I was good. Like I was good with like um, English and that. Not actually like grade wise, but you know. <laughs> you mean language? <laughs> yeah, like I was good at like, I knew a couple of like, long words for my age. Oh, long words. You know? <laughs> big words, <laughs> yeah, big, big, big words. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I used to like. That was my little thing when I was younger, yeah. Going to the studio and stuff is quite pricey. So yeah. how did you have to support yourself in your early career? We used to like go to the studio, quite a few of us at one time. So remember, like I said, we had like, there'd be like eight of us on one song, like I'm saying. So we'd just go and just figure it out, really. Everyone was <laughs> chip it in. Chip it in. So how, many, how much did you pay your hour? Do you remember? I remember it used to be 20 pound an hour. And everyone's putting a little three, 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 four pound. <laughs> three, four yeah, pound? Yeah. That, that works. Would you write your bars in the studio or outside? A bit of both, really. Yeah. But I feel like when it's like that much of you in the studio, you kind of like get um, inspired by each other. If yeah. You say. Because I've been in the studio with you, and I think you write really quick. You think so? And I think you get that because you was on track with so many people, so you probably had to like in the time, yeah. get it within like the hour or two hours that you guys booked. Was it? Was it? Was that like a thing? Yeah. But also, it just depends on my, like my mood, really. I feel like when I when I'm feeling what's going on, I just move a bit quicker. You write quick. Don't know if that's a compliment, but I mean that's a good you. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably be seeing someone like that right kid and take seven hours Literally. to do a verse. Well, of course, of course. So first tour, yeah. 2018, oh, what was that like? My first tour was a shambles. I had no tour manager. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I just made, like, I got two of the men and made them drive the tour buses and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just like sorted everything out as we went. One of the men ended up crashing the tour bus. Oh no. Under the car park. Yeah, it was just like, we were just it was a mess. vibes, yeah, just following the, the vibes. So was there any sound issues or was all that all sorted yeah. at least? But all the venues was quite like small, so even if there was sound issues, I'm sure no one didn't really... <laughs> Everyone no, was just vibes really man. Yeah, literally. Everyone was just vibes no man. Okay, so that was your first UK tour in 2018. Yeah. Have you done a tour after that? I think I've done either three or four UK tours now. Okay, so your first tour compared to your last tour, what was the like the biggest difference? The last tour was a lot more stressful. Oh really? How yeah, come? Yeah, because it's just like a lot more to think about. You got to think about more like, of like the show, that more creative input. Whereas um, obviously the first tour, you just the max tour had wires, isn't it? <laughs> the wires. It was peak, it was peak. But yeah, it's like more like logistics. Yeah. So as I as myself, I feel like early on in your career, it was more fun. Everything did, did everything seem a lot more fun than yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. Because I feel like. Wait, the bigger you get, the more eyes, the more attention. Of course. And the more you're having to live up to the standard you set from whatever literally, time. Literally. And do you ever feel a bit of pressure? You know what I'm saying? I'm not really the type to feel pressure, you know. I just take everything in my stride, really. Mm -hmm. The tour's a bit annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying, yeah. But obviously, like, we have to connect with the fans and, you know, mm. like, it's more about them than us, really, so. Yeah, yeah. I get that. And then I have a question that I feel like a lot of people want to know. Yeah. Are you taken or are you single? You know, me, I'm taken. You're taken? You're taken. How long? How long has it been now? Like, like 18 months or something? I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. girls. <laughs> that was the Trump card, Trump question. <laughs> Surprise attack. All right, Hedy, how's your drink? The drink was okay. It ended up being decent in the end. You like it? Do you want another one? Oh, that man. Do you know what, Reese? Can you come in here? Yeah. And make us. Give us something fresh. Something fresh? This was very good. I loved it. Change it up. We can do that. 